Get news again in one hour. Now over to the dance sh show, which is Mickey Mac's last show after 20 years. Good luck, Mickey. Mickey Mac. Ignition sequence start. All over Ireland. Five, four, three, Mickey two, Mac. one. All engine running. We have power. Mickey Mac. Reaching out into underworld. Two FM. Out there. The truth is out there. And so are lies. The answers are there. You just have to know where to look. Mickey, Mickey Mac. Mickey Mac. All right, then, for the last time, Mickey Max says, Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, we are sorting ourselves out, getting ourselves ready for an absolutely massive one tonight. Welcome along. Saturday Night Ritual, and tonight the final one. We've been planning this for the last couple of weeks, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. In studio, I'll have as my very special guest to review A Decade of Dance, Will Harris, whose documentary A Decade of Dance goes out on Sunday night, 10 o'clock, Network 2. And we've also got Mr. Spring looking back on six years of the dance show here at 2FM and also, of course, a decade of dance in Ireland. And lest you think that this is the final dance show on 2FM news, the 2FM will be doubling its dance output for summer. And we'll tell you all about that later on. We continue. off this uh, tribute to dance music with two absolute guaranteed floor fillers. Big tunes at the Hacienda in Manchester, the funk phenomena, early Armand Van Helden and Paper Billy People's Throw. And by the way, last night on BBC Radio 1, uh, there was a big sort of sound clash battle between Van and uh, Fat Boy. <laughs> and we got, uh, one, yeah. we got uh, Mr. Spring, Timmy Hannigan, who's been a regular a contributor to our program and will of course stay contributing to dance at 2fm and we've also got will harris in studio we're going to be looking back over the last uh, decade of dance we spoke about the hacienda and uh, what it meant to dance music as tunes that came in from ibiza and also of course the ministry but in dublin timmy mm. i mean take us back 10 years uh, to what the dublin dance scene was like oh hey well it, it, it it wasn't nothing like that, you know. Mm. We didn't. We didn't really. I don't know. It, it didn't. It did. It wasn't a scene that people attended. You know what I mean? It wasn't a. It wasn't as if people were into clubbing and into dance music. There was a couple of little radio stations. There was a few clubs and a few DJs. And and you know, mm. there was no attempt to to say we have a scene and we're you know this is our thing or it's something to get into. It was just happening, and it came from all of the the smaller attempts to start things with hip hop and so on and but it had an awful, it days. had a dodgy image and it was very underground and very very questionable well it was all part of that raves yeah well i mean the whole scene of the time was definitely targeted by all factions of do gooders and do badders everybody saw what was happening saw everybody was getting into this and they thought mm. well we can sell certain mm. things here be it clothes or chemicals it doesn't matter but mm. you know but there, we could sell tickets to gigs, we could sell records and so on. So as soon as that started happening, yeah, we all got to hear about it and it was, um, it, it spread out. But early days were very, very, very strange. Mm. Very strange, especially uh, clubs were very reluctant to play what we class dance music as. I used to get, like, taken off for playing Jack, as they called it. You know what I mean? We were playing uh, early Chicago Jack tracks and stuff and we'd be taken off, you know? So you, and we're talking 1990 really here, are we? Oh, 
I'd say no. Eighty nine was when I put yeah. out my first tune. So mm. I mean, I've been playing the tunes for about two years before that, I would think. Mm. And we were playing in pubs. Uh, usually bands that were using drum machines and synthesizers and things yeah. and need someone to play records in between. That'd be yeah. a good gig where you get to do the little hip hoppy scratchy yeah. thing because they run the MC and so on. Everybody knew about that. Yeah. But I mean, that was where it came from, yeah. a pub scene. I mean, you, you, you have to, of course, acknowledge Sides and, and yeah. the Olympic. Can you just talk to us about Sides? Because there are legendary stories about Sides staying open until 9 o'clock in the I morning. Sure, later on. But I mean, yeah. uh, yes, uh, when, <laughs> when we started off, like Sides was a place we'd all like to go. Yeah. You know, we couldn't get in. I think it was a gay club to start with, or half of it was, and there was two bits of it. And so it was just, if you got in, you were damn lucky. And mm. it was an, a club experience that you got off on rather than the music. And mm. when the club music thing moved into it, I mean, it, it all grew up tremendously. I think it's very sad, though, today, that still we got a, we're sent home out of clubs at half past two in the morning. I mean, when you take London, for example, where you mm. can stay on till four, five, six o'clock at the ministry, then go to Sun Essential or go to trade or wherever. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we're going to call in... Will, Will Harris is joining us as well. Will, Will of course, has uh, uh, written uh, and produced and been working and for the last and 12. Directed and edited and shot. And <laughs> it has taken you 12 months. It's, it's going it's out tomorrow night. It is. It's going out tomorrow night at 10 past 10. Will it Harris. Took, um, oh, 10 past 10 now. I read it was 20 past <laughs> in one thing. There Half has past in another, right? <laughs> okay. Well, what time is it going it's, out, by the way? It's 10 past 10 tomorrow night. Okay. Network 2. And, um... Yeah, it was made over the course of a year. Um, Tim and yourself, of course, feature in it. We'll be going through the list and maybe sifting through some of the tracks in it. Um, I suppose actual time it took was about five, five months, um, including about two months to edit. I was editing this beast on Christmas Day. God. <laughs> and New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's, you, it's You worthwhile. should get out more. Really. <laughs> try clubbing, it's good. It's Meet excellent. people, you know, well, and well, you dance. Your love, of, your love of dance music, I mean, it goes back to where? My love of dance music goes back to Israel. I was lucky enough to find myself in Israel in the mid-80s. Uh, Frankie Goes to Hollywood was coming out. Propaganda Machinery. Do you remember those 12 inches? Machine Machinery, yeah. Yeah. Jewel, uh, Jewel was their best. Jewel was the, was the one. Um, all of that was happening. That's where I saw 12-inch records for the first time. They were getting... I was working on this radio station out there called The Voice of Peace. Mm. It was a ship and it was anchored about five miles, five kilometers yeah. off the coast of Tel Aviv. Gosh. And um, f found myself looking at 12-inch records and saying, wow, that's great. Extended beats and bits that you can do things. And there'd be like tape decks on the ship and we were like taking bits of the records, laying them off the tape, reversing them and just mm. playing around with it. Last night a DJ saved my life being Excellent. the 12-inch the, the we all had in, mm. in those mm. days. It was... Mm. Uh, a, a minefield of stuff on the B-side, all the little telephone call bits and stuff. Everybody used it. Yeah. Uh, not, what, what else was out there? The Ra Band, Clouds Across the Moon. Do you remember those bits and pieces? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a 12. Yeah. But, I mean, in those days now, you've got to remember that all 12-inch singles were basically an instrumental version mm. of the single, yes. followed by the single yeah. version with a bit of echo halfway through. Well, well, that, well that's you got, got your opportunity to go in, chop it yeah, up and yeah. loop it up. Can I ask you, I mean, we everybody praises Ibiza for bringing and breaking dance music a la people like Graham Park and people like that towards the late 80s. Do you do you regard Timmy um, Ibiza as being very important? I mean, I mean, today it's got terribly tacky and almost too commercial, but back in the late 80s, early 90s, I mean, Ibiza was so important, wasn't it? Um, I'll tell you how important it was. It was where all of our DJs and tastemakers in the UK and Europe would go for holidays. Yeah. And the Spanish DJs there would inflict this happy summer vibe upon them, and they would bring it home. That's that's the importance of it. Now you've got all of us invading Ibiza and playing the music that we hear here yeah. in Ibiza. I mean, what's the point? I mean, you might as well just like put sand on the sitting room floor and get some plastic palm trees in and get sick a lot and fall around in a fight. You know, you do that here. A couple of yeah. won't cost you three hundred quid. You know, um, but it was it, yeah. It, it, I think I did, there's so many unknown DJs, you know, these guys who, who, who changed everybody's attitudes. And, I mean, somebody has to do that. You did. You documented some of the Irish stuff, but uh, will anybody admit at the moment in the UK who it was that they ripped off when they went to Ibiza and came back? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They can't remember these guys' names. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're listening to a very special dance show. We're celebrating a decade of dance and also uh, almost seven years of the uh, 2 FM dance show. Uh, coming up to 17 minutes past day, we're going to take a break, but then we're going to play a very special tune from the, uh, the Stress Box. Tell us about this tune, Timmy. Yeah, with Stress Records. Um, 
allegedly, I'm going to put on my alleged hat here. Stress is finished. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Apparently, Be careful now, Timothy. We want uh, my final program. I want to stay out of the High Court. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, there's been there's been I'm there's leaving. been some. <laughs> let's just say certain people's phones have been disconnected and oh, so really? on uh, in the stress camp. Some people have moved on and are, are, are formed a new label and yada yada. But stress records. God damn influential. I Take mean, a break. <laughs> I'm stranded. Use the boss. Of course. of club culture on your radio it is uh, 90 to 92 also 97 the excellent john digway bedrock and for what we dream of one of the real renaissance classics a tune timmy that was championed by people like sasha and anybody associated with uh, a tune which was championed by mark Cavanagh uh, six times a night sometimes <laughs> in the olympic i mean i mean that's where we all heard that first and it was mind-blowingly exceptional i mean roars from the crowd at several different occasions you know where they shouldn't it was <laughs> one of those tunes Really was. I mean, 1993, it said it all, and I think it's been a hit every year since, hasn't it? Mm. Remixed by everybody. Oh, yeah, and, and their grannies. <laughs> was it, what, was it, though, it was a digweed job, though, initially, wasn't it? Yes, diggers. Diggers. The diggers played it a lot mm. at, at Renaissance and wore his slate out, so he thought he'd better cut it properly and pre mm. uh, press it up for everyone else to mm. play. You know, when we yeah. talk about Renaissance and the Ministry, let's talk about the Ministry for a moment, because the Ministry is sort of 1992-ish. Mm, um, yeah. When it, it had cred then... Yeah. in its marvellous home of dance at Gaunt Street in London. But, but all of a sudden, like the Ibiza thing, it's gone. It's become a tourist resort. It's sort of become, when you go to London, you go to the Houses of Parliament, and you visit yeah. the Ministry of Defence, and, and of course, the <laughs> Ministry of Sound. Sound. Yeah. Yeah. Will, will and, and get the mugs. <laughs> <laughs> and the jacket. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in, in, in your documentary tomorrow night on Network 2, on the decade of dance, Will yeah. Harris, are you, are you going to look at that sort of scene in Dublin and... In Ireland in, in, in sort of 92, 93? Absolutely. Well, at the beginning of the documentary, one of the interesting things is uh, I think the per first person we meet is Timothy in oh. studio in Bray. Oh dear. Yes. And one of the interesting things um, that hopefully will come from that is that a lot of people, a lot of kids who are, you know, coming to see in the last five years and, and mm. from then on in don't actually know what went before it and the effort and the battles which mm. people like Tim. Um, fought to, to, to get this music on stage. Yeah, but like I said, scene. there was a lot of people who influenced uh, the English DJs when they went to Ibiza, right? But we were all influenced by all sorts of things coming in, hearing stories, seeing things happen. Mm. But I mean, don't forget that uh, I mean, 2FM were involved right at the beginning in the RDS in 1989, 1990 with the awesome raves and obsession and mm. all of that. I mean, mm. uh, they were packed out sort of starting early in the day. We had, yeah, everything was in place then. The fact that um, it didn't financially work out for a few people involved. But the whole race thing, thing, of course, the whole race thing had a bad name, though, hadn't it? Because it, it's, it, it smelled of drugs and, and well, not, badly run events. And not yet. Yeah. At that stage, not really. Like, those, those things that happened in the RDS, uh, the crowd was very young. I mean, mm. The drug dealers really weren't on the ball then, mm. so they weren't swamping the kids with all sorts of rubbish mm. at that time. Mm. You know, rave, the, the rave was quite a, almost respectable up to about 92. And then it became very dodgy, didn't it? Was it was almost I mean, amusing. No, yeah, it, it didn't dodgies. become very dodgy. It became good for somebody to write that it was very, very dodgy. I mm. mean, they went in and saw something iffy going on, obviously, mm. and wrote about it. I mean, fair enough. It's freedom of speech. They can do what they like. Mm. But uh, people would concentrate on that because they can relate to a drug dealer and victim situation, but they can't really relate to dance music. It's yeah. like, I mean, that's a lot of the attraction kids have for it with the clothes mm. and the music. Their parents hate it. What is that yeah. noise? Yeah. You know, but yeah. most people couldn't relate to what was going on, didn't really want to understand it. So to mm. put a nice label on it like that mm. was very convenient for a lot of people. We here, of course, Will, would have, I suppose, given people in Ireland over the past six years their only opportunity to listen to dance music. Uh, you know, and we started off as a 90-minute show, myself and Pat Morley, yeah. uh, seven years ago, went then to four hours. And, uh, but, you know, it wasn't enough for the people of Ireland. They wanted pirate radio, didn't they? And mm -hmm. can you remember the, the, the earlier pirates? Abs oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. They, they, filled, they filled that gap which was needed to be done. And it's something that we touch on the documentary, vital. And to be honest, when you're trying to cram the story into an hour, 
certain things had to go. And one of the mm. things that went in favour of the pirates was the flyers and the whole mm. art that yeah. came out of, out of dance culture. Mm. And you can see the changing times and changing tunes from, from house to techno to drum and bass in the artwork. Mm. Unfortunately, weren't able to touch on that. Mm. Went for the pirates. Mm. Mm. Um, Very influential because... Um, I mean, one thing I said over and over, I wouldn't have got where I am today without pirates because they let you play with their equipment. Mm, mm, yeah. <laughs> they let mm. you in uh, all night long to, uh, to mix up something or practice on decks or whatever. And back then, mm. Technics were unheard of. The only place to get a, a go on Technics or anything, any decent mixer with some sort of fold back was in one of these hobby radio stations. I mean, piracy, it, nobody thought, nobody was wearing any eye patches and had wooden legs at that time. <laughs> no, seriously, there was no gigs being run, mm. there was no money being made, there was nothing yeah. dodgy going on. There genuinely was a community aspect mm. to it, and it was great fun. Mm. It was a hobby, and mm. from that came so much. I mean, I mean, the first hit single that uh, the, the Sound Crowd thing and Red Records produced through PWL was 90% uh, of the, the boost that got in the beginning here was from uh, was from the Pirates, and was mm. Sunset in particular, and Gary and, and his mum. <laughs> okay, we're going to play a tune that, uh, to me, sums up the one night that uh, I was at Cream, about 1993, and uh, I mean, Cream is an event... Uh, when in Liverpool you follow Everton at Goodison Park or Liverpool at Anfield or you go to Cream on a Saturday night. Thousands of people queuing up. I can just picture them. Uh, the door pickers picking out the babes, the guys, the girls very disappointed. Didn't get into Cream this week. We'll try again next week. People rushing back to their mum to change from their jeans into their little Lurex minis. It was, it's a happening and I really recommend anybody to enjoy what is definitely one of the greatest cultures in the UK, cream on a Saturday night at Nation in Liverpool. the 2th and Essential Dance Show on Saturday nights, the final one. But as we said before, it's not the uh, final dance show on 2 FM because uh, the uh, dance vibe continues. A doubling dance output you'll be delighted to hear on 2 FM. But we're wrapping up uh, uh, six years of dance and uh, also celebrating a program that's going out on Network 2 television tomorrow night, which is a decade of dance uh, produced and uh, directed by Will Harris. And I'm also joined in the studio by Mr. Spring, Tim Hannigan, who's... Uh, Hit Voyager 1 took the clubbing world by storm and present getting massive offers for his black tracks from everybody from Madonna to Richard Harris. Madonna's <laughs> told you not to mention Madonna. <laughs> not allowed to mention that. <laughs> okay, okay, we, 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 we play, I play that tune because um, I remember the first time I heard that in Cream. I also heard it driving up the M62 from Manchester to Liverpool on uh, P. Tong's Essential Selection, which of course, I have to admit, anybody that knows anything about dance will admit that Mickey Mac every Friday night listened to P. Tong and ripped it off on a Saturday night. Nobody copped it on except a couple of the people in, in mm, the inner yeah. sanctum. This is a confession. Oh yes, I mean, I like, because it's the last one, <laughs> 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 he confessed. <laughs> I, I, want to, I want to meet my maker and the, the Lord to say to me, you confessed. <laughs> <laughs> well look, Michael, I have to say, at this point, with a yeah. tear in my eye, yeah. That might have been your routine Friday night, listen, and Saturday night, rip it off. But, I mean, we'd always be going to gigs. We'd be whatever, but, and it was part of my, you know, my Saturday night did involve a big Mickey Mac and a chalky shake every night. And now, Absolutely. all that junk's finished, man. It's like real sad. What am I going to do on a Saturday night for my, you know? Yeah. It's like, you know what I mean? You know yeah. what I mean? I, 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 this question has to be asked at this point. I'm sorry, but I, I don't know. No, let me finish. Okay, you're going to have to answer that one too. Yeah. yeah. I, want to, I want to talk about the, the tune that we did together because um, I think that um, when the history book is written, I think I probably was the first Irish DJ to have a top 30 hit, thanks to you and to uh, Mark. Well, you were the first Irish uh, radio DJ, I mean, mm. as in yeah. real official one, one that got paid like. Mm. I mean, had a hit, <laughs> I think. Um, with, with, with that, all right. Yeah. So, uh, for those serious anoraks, I'm going to play this one. This made number, it made the top 30. It stayed in the top 30 for two weeks. I got a massive royalty check. It was produced, <laughs> it was produced and engineered by Tim Hannigan, and it was called.
Dance Nation. Dance, Dance Nation. Nation. TV as well. We were on TV and <laughs> Pete Tong, Pete Tong played it for about 70 seconds and realized, what? <laughs> I mean, that was originally, some of the purists will actually say, that was originally a sound crowd tune. No, no, it's not, it was. It yeah, is. It is. Yeah. No, that was, uh, was a, bit of, a bit of Tony DeV and a bit of uh, sound crowd um, and some radio tuning. <laughs> noises and you <laughs> talking that was like mm. original frontier nicking things but mm. uh, that was all played which i've just marveled upon there like there was no nick bits mm. no no we played every little mm. tweaky note in that rather than just lift bits off other people's records which is the way you do it now <laughs> Um, you mentioned uh, Tony DeVille. It's Tony DeBart, isn't it, you were saying? Um, oh, you Tony DeBart, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Tony yeah. DeBart has to be dropped now. I mean, yeah. uh, it was just... I don't know, this, I think this was our first dance song. Mm. Like, we were all dancing to this months and months and months before anyone else heard it, and it crossed over to radio and stuff, and it really was... It was just a tune, mm. C-H-O-O-N. I mean, you know, it got you. You're a hard man or if you're a child. Front row. It got you. It was well, a brilliant tune. Can I just mention the Cork scene? Because at this stage, Henry's is beginning to get it together down in Cork. Uh, Greg and Shane. Greg and Shane down there is kicking off with kind of Nina Cherry Buffalo stance mm -hmm. kind of stuff at the, at the beginning of the night and then and then building it up from there. But Cork mm -hmm. has always been a, a very soulful oh, vibe. I mean, from the, from working on um, pirates like pirates such as ERI. Mm -hmm. um, oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> I can't to leave the room again. <laughs> Um, but I mean, you, you, you know, guitar riffs were yeah. out. Mm. Guitar riffs were out, and I mean, Joe jo O'Connor, the, the boy in control there. You know, it, it was Marvin Gaye, it was the Luther Vandross, and it was the funk and the disco at the time. You know, always Bob Marley mm. bashing that. Mm. I was saying in the last couple of weeks of the show, um, I'm sure Greg Dowling and Shane Johnson must be smiling when the Romantony tune "Hold On," which is the Cork anthem "Ball and Chain," yeah. is now in the in the buzz charts at last, and they must be smiling because they were playing that, popping that at Henry's. Yeah, Yonks. 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 I heard it three or four years ago, Sir Henry. Yeah. Okay, here's uh, Tony D. Bart. Tony DeBart and the real thing. Okay, you're listening to the 2FM dance show. Our, uh, this our brings a tear to the eye. <laughs> Tony DeBart like and Stillorgan. Did you see him there? Tony when did you actually uh, hear that tune first? Well, I heard that one first in the Olympic, quite mm. obviously. And everyone, mm. what the hell is this? But within two mm. weeks, we were all doing it. We all had to have it. You have mentioned the Olympic, but we must remind people, because we, we, we started up by talking about sides, I mean, that's wonderful, decadent, late-night place. Mm. Uh, but the Olympic was also, of course, very decadent, but also it was very important to Dublin. 19 Sprawling, out of control, yes. Yeah. Very, very funny. It was in South Ann Street, was it, where the system is? Is that where it is? No, no, no. The Olympic no. was uh, off Wexford Street. Yeah, just yeah. Yeah. Kind of area. Yeah. But no, that, yeah. that wild behaviour. Absolutely. You know, yeah. totally brilliant. You One extreme to another. I mean, rumours of extreme violence were greatly over-exaggerated. Mm. Mm. And a lot of stories perpetrating about the place were put about by us <laughs> to, <laughs> stop people, to stop people going because it yeah. was rammed every week and it was uncomfortable enough with, you know, you know, near a thousand people cramming in every week. And the last thing we wanted was a load of people in trousers. You know? <laughs> it's a bit of action. I must say, look, looking back, one of the one of the DJs that I would have respected is Tall Paul. And um, when did he first come to Ireland? Um, I, I don't know when he first played, but the first time he, he became aware to us was um, one of the weekenders in Henry's when um, this tune was dropped. You know what I mean? The first time we heard this, we was like, what is it? Is it, It's definitely Bits Raw 
lobbed off a Cleveland City record. We don't know what it was. I can't remember who played it, though. It's driving me crazy now. I'm sure everyone will be worried. You were there. You know who played it, but I forget. But, um, you know, Henry's, what can I say? You, you, you put the cherry on the cake with the earlier stuff, but for me, what made Henry's was this tune. Because, <laughs> I mean, it was the first time I heard it there. There's a Brit playing it, by the way. I can't remember who. Terrible. Oh, it wasn't, wasn't there that night. A hole in my memory after that night. But this stuff... Hey, listen, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, I want to talk, I want to talk, what am I doing, what am I doing? I want to talk about the, uh, the fourth dimension, and I want to also talk about other Irish DJs. Um, we've also, we've already mentioned uh, the lads in Cork, Sir Henry's and Mark Havan and Timmy Hannigan, but there's also guys like Johnny Moy and Liam Dollard and Liam, yeah. Mark yeah. Dixon. Now, there's a guy, Future Groove Records. Oh, yes, indeed. Yeah. For, for extremely cool people, as far as I remember. Mm -hmm. I even bought a record there once. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he was actually sort of selling... Oh, he's, he 12 inches before Billy, was he? Ah, oh, not at all, no, no, no. no. Billy was, Billy's been there since... Uh, Billy sold his first 78, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Pressed on Bakelite in 1952. Matt Monroe. Have, you know, it was yeah. actually yeah. Matt Monroe. Yeah. And later on, it, you know, he, he was the person who brought that Elvis we're, mystery we're train in 78. We're talking about Billy Murray at Abbey Dis, just in case people are worrying who we're talking about, but it's not sort of... Oh, absolutely, absolutely yeah. 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 Mm. He's off to Spain, I think, tomorrow. Mm. Is he? Yeah, he, ha he is, without doubt, though, I suppose, a very important person in the whole dance thing in Dublin, isn't he? Well, I mean, Billy was where you went to get your 12 inches mm. back in the day. Well, it was Mary Street, of course, uh, Golden mm. Discs, which uh, specialised in polygram and stuff on 12 and so on. But Billy could get you the singles and so on. He, he had a shop on Abbey Street, like Upper Abbey Street, before he moved to the Mall and so on. The Mall! <gasps> wow, the Mall. Okay, what, what am I playing now? Oops, sorry. <clears throat> I remembered who it was who played that tune in Henry's, by the way. Yeah. It was Paul Bleasdale. Okay, what's go. this? What's this? Oh, yeah, it's Fourth Dimension mm. versus Soundcrowd. Mm. Storm 95 remix, man, yeah. fine. Yeah. And we want to be a big shout out to the Fourth Dimension because I think that it's fair to say they were so important in the whole sort of techno thing around 95, 96. Where are they now? Are they doing anything? I think they're all keeping busy in their own separate ways. I haven't spoken to any of them in a while. But, okay, uh, here's a memory. Storm from Killarney, the Fourth Dimension. Dance of 2FM with a great Oak and Folk classic, Not Over Yet, from uh, State of Grace, uh, with, of course, his legendary perfecto partner, Steve Osborne. And perhaps that tune began the, the turnaround from dance being underground to going overground. Well, yeah, I mean, the Tony DeBar thing crossed over, I think, before that, but that was around before Tony DeBar. Bring your microphone a bit nearer to you, Timothy. Yeah, yeah. You're too used to using your... How's that? <laughs> um, that tune actually came out on a white promo under State of Grace. Yeah, and yeah, um, yeah. I think, uh, did they pick it up then? Because it was definitely probably, to me, the, the first real, after, after the Tony tune, that, that went top 20 mm, uh, well, for, for, for Oakenfield, didn't it? And, I and think Oakenfield. it charted, it was first it was circulated to the DJs, as you do, and it was played to death. It was an anthem. Mm. Thank you very much. Then it had its first stab at the charts and didn't really do anything. And it was still being, you know, asked for, and it was growing and growing over the... I think it was three years it took for it to happen. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it finally... Did it go to number one, or did it nearly go uh, to I think one? it did a top five, I'd say. Yeah. Or and, of course, like, like, like the American Drifters, I believe there are three or four Graces now travelling around. <laughs> oh, that's nice, uh, I mean, lots of uh, session vocalists uh, yeah. claiming to have worked on that one, I would say. <laughs> um, Will, um, in your documentary tomorrow night on Network 2, by the way, if you just joined us, a special dance show tonight, we're celebrating a decade of dance. Um, Will Harris stuck and uh, Timmy Hannigan in the studio. Will, just tomorrow night in, in your documentary, do, do you actually sort of... Yeah, we kick, we kick in, we kick yeah. in uh, the mid kind of 90s mainstream vibe mm. with um, some very buzzy shots of yourself <laughs> in one of these studios here. <laughs> um, and then we uh, cut to the pod because I suppose mm. in Dublin terms particularly the pod was, was, was when you kind of, when everybody started getting dressed up to go out clubbing. Mm. But interestingly the pod, I was there I think for the first four Saturday nights and it's nothing like it became. It was very hot hot and very steamy and very uh, sexy in there. Mm. Mini skirts, sweat, dripping. 
Who was who was the guy the first DJ there? Came over from London. Um, he worked in that I second record. Jonathan Davis. Jonathan yeah. Davis. Yes. Yeah, the man yeah. of uh, of many uh, different colours. Yeah. 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 I mean, I remember oh, listening to that wonderful D Ream tune that was remixed by Sasha. Mm. You are the best thing on the dance floor in the pod. And yeah, I mean, yeah. uh, to another, me, that, to another me grower, heard, yeah. yeah, to me, like that was when Sasha put his hands on a on a top forty tune. I felt, gosh. Dance music is coming over ground. Well, w what happened with that one was we were playing the White Label, which was an instrumental. Mm. So when it started to cross over commercially, they threw a vocal on it. That could have been actually the first one of those tunes that, you know, is a hit as an instrumental in the underground, and then they slap a vocal on it so it can get into the charts. But uh, as far as I know, uh, as far as I remember anyway, um, it was definitely one of the first to have a vocal thrown to try and make a commercial, but uh, yeah, that seems to have started a trend now. I mean, DJ Sacken and all of that sort of thing, you can't really have a, a crossover and throwing a vocal on it, but it's still all dance music, you know? That was, I think, a very legitimate face of it. You know, the Paul Oakenfold sound. And then you had people like David Morales working with Rita Franklin <laughs> and Julius <laughs> Roberts. Do you yeah. remember that? Yeah, well, I mean, them being Americans, you see, yeah. you know, it would have been easy for them to hook up. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, the licensing thing only started go going there now as well, uh, around the time of Grace as well, where all the labels were sort of uh, taking stuff in from the States. Kathy Brown and so on had a legitimate hit and yada, 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 you know. Mm. And of course, all the sound. Who's the first big Robbie sample, big hit record? It was that Right On Time thing, Black Box, which mm. was what? What's her name? Ooh. Lolita yeah. Holloway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so all of that started resurging. And it's still happening months. today. Saturday night at 2FM, things just get better. Hold that sucker down with the OT Quartet. Uh, I want to talk to Will for a moment because I want to talk about his uh, documentary tomorrow night. Uh, give us an idea of some of the tunes that we're going to hear on yeah, the documentary. Yeah, some of the tunes. I've got a little box a with box me here. Of tunes. Um, flicking through the tunes, Underworld, Cowgirl. Just yeah. had to be done. Gosh, yeah. It was a must do. Um, okay, can we, just, can, we just, can we just remind people, these probably are the most important tracks over the past decade of dance. French Kiss, Le Louis, yes. Le Louis, to be honest, these were the uh, tracks which I found at home and <laughs> slid underneath <laughs> the images I was editing <laughs> the in my living room, but they seemed to work. We had to throw a bit of Bob Marley with the sound yeah. of the South in there, Bob Marley being the vibe. Bass Odyssey, of course, are in there <laughs> with... Um, a version of Arctic Wind, which hasn't really been heard anywhere else. It's mm. got a vocal across it, which they performed live at the Smyrna Dance Awards last year. Mm. Part two of the program, let me explain that part one of the program sets up, roughly speaking, 88 to 98. That's the first half hour. The second half hour, then we relive the clubbing experience through the doors of the Red Box and into the Smyrna Dance Awards, which was prime location for shooting. You had all the key players under the, under the one roof. We had Rob Rowland live on stage. Um, we had Bass Odyssey and we had Invisible Armies. Let me just go through some of the other tracks. Um, played a snatch of the Massive Attack um, Unfinished Symphony video. Mm. A great track. And one or two people, not too many people have seen the program. One or two people who have seen the program, the minute that tune comes on, they go, ah, I love that. Well, of course, in people's all time top five you know, is it, attack. yeah? It is always there, though, isn't right. it? Uh, Decal Excelsius yeah. uh, are there. Alan O'Boyle, of course, does, does a nice little interview in the programme. Um, and this track, which you're hearing underneath, is um, the producer of the programme. His name is David Bickley. He's uh, actually a producer in RT in Cork. And he fused Celtic melodies with this kind of tribal track. And uh, it's uh, Hyperborea, and he called it Doolaman. Robertson at his very, very best. Um, Back it a piece. Man. <laughs> Haven't seen ein packet of pizza. I must actually say, we're getting a lot of people sending us emails tonight wishing us luck, but uh, people are saying, is dance finished on 2FM? And can we say no? Because if you've been listening to this program over the past couple of weeks, we've been working towards my departure by bringing in a guy who I first heard last uh, October. Uh, no, last September on Pulse, uh, which is one of these awful pirates that go and broadcast all over Dublin, and uh, we got him in. <laughs> and I think he's, I think he's going to, he's going to take the seat with, uh, with, with wonderful power. Yeah, man. John um, is joining us now, and I know that uh, I'm handing you this mantle in about 20 minutes' time. Um, what is the vibe going to be, so? Well, um, where can I start? Because it's it's how 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 can you what can you do after this? I mean, you know, uh, what can we do? Well, basically, we have a couple of things going on. We have um, we have 
a good vibe happening with the show now. A lot of new people on board. Um, basically, Not allowed to say too much. Yeah, it's yeah. All, that's secret, all we can, really? yeah, all we can do is sort of, you know, it's wait and see, wait and see. Okay, if I was to look back and say what I would have loved to have done more on the program is I would love to have broken more Liquid Wheels. I mean, we played Liquid Wheel earlier on. Um, sadness that we didn't have more Liquid Wheels coming out of Dublin, coming out of the world. I know we did have Bass Odyssey, who we, we played in the early days and would have broken them nationally on this program. And, and the work that Rob Rowland did and Dunica, you know mm -hmm. Dunica, the works of D1. Yeah, you know. yeah. But I think the probably, uh, and Will will probably agree with me, that uh, you know, we didn't have enough of these. And I think that the policy of future will maybe to give the 2FM will probably respect dance now because in the early days I think they didn't understand what dance was about but I think now as we in the last three or four years they the have three begun four to appreciate years they have and the whole thing has reached a nice plateau and I think yeah. we're almost on the verge of another little vroom, upturn yeah. and the upturn is going to come I believe um, th through th through our own artists more of our own artists we have the anodynes out there yeah. we have the uh, we have the 18 year old kids or whatever they were when they released their first CD a couple of years ago in the studio doing it all on the PC and it's lovely mm. that it's all tied in with the technology mm. are you looking at the webcam as we speak Yes, www.2fm.ie. Go down to your webcam and you can actually see us all doing our thing. We got Ian Wilson in the studio, who's been my producer uh, for the last couple of months. I must also mention, of course, that the original producer of this was Pat the Head Morley, who, <laughs> who encouraged what we were about no, at a time. Pat, Pat House of Pain. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> Ian, I mean, uh, Ian has been associated, he's recorded everybody, and especially, of course, in the early days, was very much the man who would, would have worked with you too. I mean, we are in a new era, Ian, are we not? Oh, Music, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, well, ev everybody knows there's uh, fairly serious changes coming up in, in 2FM now. The, uh, the official guff is going to be released yeah. sometime next week, I imagine exactly what's going on. But what I can tell you is, uh, in general terms, there's going to be uh, increased commitment to, we call it new music, there's going to be far more uh, dance music and a much wider spread of dance going on the station. I, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, be, I can't be too specific. Yeah. Now, uh, part of it is, is we're going to certainly have more commitment to more live dance, whether it be Irish, uh, happening Irish clubs, we're going to have a lot more international live dance, I mean we've stuff coming in from a lot of the big European dance festivals, uh, so far we've got Sonar, Barcelona, Atlantis which is taking place in Lausanne in a few weeks time, I mean, these are serious events, Th these are big big dances, Hyperstate which happens in Norway at the Maybank holiday weekend, and you're talking the big names in world dance, so we're going to have access through the various things to a huge range of international live, and the live Irish DJ guys. stuff, and we're going to be doing much, much more for the Irish guys. I mean, mm. we, we I mean, Timmy, you've worked with a couple of the Irish bands, like the Fourth Dimension, like the like the Little Wheelers. But, mm. but, but, how are we going to get them in? How there are so many people out there with, as as Will said, their PCs. Who are they? Who can they write to? Who can they send their demos to? Tim. Well, I mean, <laughs> no. <coughs> all because along, they, they nobody to, to write to. Really, no, all along, I, um, I've been particularly open to anybody who wanted any information. I'm, I'm in favour of freedom of information of all types. So. You, know, you can always email me, and it's at or isk at iol.ie. That's at risk at iol.ie. <laughs> All your no, 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 no. <laughs> seriously, people email me with with silly technical questions, embarrassed questions. I don't know what this means. What is this? And you know, and I'm plain English person. Like you know, I'm not an Irish person. So I beg your pardon, but in plain English, I will explain these things. It's not a problem. But the biggest problem I think people are facing now is how to get their music from their PCs and their bedrooms into the shops, <laughs> because I meet someone every day who makes music, and they done something which blows me away it's good enough to put out and so on but they they don't tend to put it out because they have to do it themselves they have to follow it themselves it takes up too much time and by the time it does get into the shops they're bored with it yeah. and mm. you know they want to do something else or they're ashamed of it and they don't yeah. push it anymore and so on because they do progress at mm. tremendous rate mm. but but yeah. i was disappointed that you know we had the fanning sessions at 2fm yeah. we didn't have enough and i know now it's going to change enough of what will be called the John Power sessions well, or the dance wouldn't sessions. wouldn't it be nice if we had a sort of a fanning sessions for dance yeah, DJs? Well, that's all I mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wouldn't it? Wouldn't I mean, it? I mean, yeah, what an interesting yeah. idea. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, we've, <laughs> we've done it. We, we've done it already for, what we call it, rock bands, yeah. in, in, indie bands, whatever mm. way you like to put it. And the, the basic idea is to apply the same, the mm. same thing to the dance, the whole d range mm. of dance activities mm. in Ireland and approach mm. it with the same kind of energy, resources and stuff. I mean, put in bluntest terms, the amount of support that uh, anybody else in Ireland gives to 
young musicians of any sort it's outside Tour FM is damn all, mm. frankly. The other stations don't do anything. And the same is true in the dance business. Yeah. There really isn't a lot of uh, serious exposure for any young mm. acts or artists. Mm. And I mean, that's, that's our gig. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to do. We're going to make sure that your, you know, sound crowds and et cetera, et cetera, yeah. uh, get the exposure. So write Ian Wilson or at risk at IOL.ie and yeah, get no, your no, demos just, in. Just get yeah. the stuff in. I mean, one yeah. of my regrets is that we haven't had enough bands like Bass Odyssey, yeah. like Sound yeah. Crowd. Yeah. Like those the Weirs. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're like the, you know, and mm. fourth dimensions and people who are hyperborea and people like that who can do a live thing that mel melts mm. together all kinds of influences with DJs. I mean, you've got loads of bands like Underworld and Faithless and so on, are hugely successful. We just just don't just don't seem to have that kind of thing here. Yeah. And mm. I'd like to see it developing. You know, not mm. just DJ culture that's important, but a whole crossover. Mm. You know? mm. And I think it's well, it's the talents there. It's just a matter of getting the act together to expose it. I think you're, when you hear the details, you're going to find out. Good. That we, we, okay. we, we've got the general. Can I play together. this one? Because this is one of the great divas of dance. She didn't get a bob when it was sampled on uh, yeah, Redbox yeah. right on time. Yeah, right on time, yeah. 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 Well, Lolita Holloway, what a woman, what a voice. What a woman, all right. Family side. <laughs> Herself, the uh, oh, yeah. diva Lolita Holloway. Oh, six right pack. Time. Six pack. A six pack. <laughs> 24 uh, pack. That was actually a big Hacienda tune, I'd imagine, to 92, 93. Uh, okay, before I wrap it up, I want to get out of here by 10 if I can. Um, Will, just. One last little just decade of dance plug. And yeah. I suppose the, 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 the thread running through the program, which. Um, blah, 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 time of the program is tomorrow night, 10 past 10. Got to get that one in. But the thread running through the program, uh, part one of the program, <laughs> is the underground <laughs> to. Um, overground situation and the other thing that we we'll want to get clearly through is that dance music it's nothing new this is nothing new this hasn't happened 10 years ago yeah. this thing is going on since there was a couple of people in a cave and one of them picked up a rock and started yeah. tapping the yeah. rock and that's yeah. when yeah. dance yeah. music started he started tapping it in 4-4 four, four. okay like i mean there was in a plenty, rhythm. Of, plenty of three four and waltz rock tapping going on but it was when man actually got that four four it was the mammoth we're talking dance mammoth rage yeah that's um, and that's one thing that we want that we get through in the program that's what we set up in the very first 60 seconds this is nothing new People have always wanted to have fun. Over to Tim. Yeah. The fun machine. One thing is for sure. <laughs> There's hell below. <laughs> <laughs> And I never got to play Primal Scream come together. Oh, you did, but John Parr might play that yeah, when he comes yeah, in in a few moments. Yeah. 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 We're nearing the... Uh, no. Well, the can I say the this? End. The highlights for me for this were going to the ministry. We did a live show from the ministry in 1994. Oh. When, I mean, met Tony Prince over at the ministry and his son, who, of course... Dan, who works with the Mix Mag, mm. uh, also, of course, the work that myself and Ian did on Eurodance, and especially oh, the night when we went all over the went all I over Europe. Yeah, Eurodance. We have uh, we have a nice uh, clip from Eurodance yeah. in the program as well. And that handing was a over fuzzy event. handing over to the Goa Club in Rome and Pete Tong Excellent. and Carl Cox at Cream, and we also went to Johnny Amsterdam. <laughs> I'm seriously lodging it up. <laughs> also, I um, I stand I stand out. In, uh, one other event that really stands out is a night in Turles, 1995, when I was introducing the Prodigy, but before I introduced the Prodigy, I introduced, I introduced Mark and Timmy as the sound crowd. 40,000 people there. Can you remember that night? I remember. I remember. I remember. Will, I do the, will I do the Fela anecdote? Do, will yeah. I? Yeah. do yeah. 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 Okay, do, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. This is now Our visuals guy, Martin. Um, since then, he was very nervous before he put up his visuals on the big uh, on the big Fela TV screen. So he drank a half a bottle of whiskey, <laughs> <laughs> and he decided it'd be good for us to have scream therapy, yeah. uh, because we were also nervous of getting up and fa uh, playing in front of forty eight thousand people. Um, so we had a screaming fit. We all faced one another in the centre of the room, tried to release the tension and tried to get our heads together because we had to go on stage and not make idiots of ourselves in between Primal Scream and, and, and the Prodigy. <laughs> so we all faced one another and did this 3-2-1 scream, exhale all your air. In the middle of doing this, the promoter of the entire failure, Dennis Desmond, opened the door to see what the screaming was. We all turned in unison and screamed at him. He shut the door and that was that. <laughs> You know, and then, that was my introduction to the uh, the festival scene. We were removed immediately from our uh, our caravan because we were disturbing the prodigy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we weren't. Prodigy, the prodigy needed to get their, themselves together, you know. And, yeah. and we were doing too much screaming. But I think we we had someone else's uh, uh, dressing room taken over then shortly afterwards because uh, we were banned from our one for screaming. We recorded that one, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, that was on telly, and uh, you, you, you put it on 2FM yeah, as a it's a concert special yeah, thing. Uh, wow. Okay, I came in here, I have to admit this now, like I admit that every Friday night I listen to Pete Tong, and oh. <laughs> came here, I came here. Said we'd never have guessed. <laughs> Well, why did you not email me, Ian, and remind me? But well, I came in here uh, 20 years ago, and the first record I ever played... Oh, first, <laughs> first, first record I ever played, yeah. about to be revealed, yeah. was yeah. Boogie Wonderland. Oh, yeah. 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 Earth, Wind, Wind and, and Fire. Wallace lives. And John Parr, John Parr wasn't even born. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you don't have it with you. Um, you? No, have I got it? I don't think I have. Okay, I want to play my last one, and I want to say thank you to uh, Ian especially uh, for tonight, and also to Pat Morley, who worked with me uh, for so many years in the early days. I'm going to finish with uh, a song which uh, I remember hearing on the dance floor at the Hacienda in Manchester, remixed by Frankie Knuckles and David Morales. Am I right in saying that? Frankie Knuckles and David Morales. The... Uh, the, the amazing Where Love Lives Come On In. This must be one of the greatest dance records ever, is it? Not far off it. Mm. We'd have to take votes on it, but it's up there. It's mm. one of those, you know what I mean? End of the night, where's my coat? How am I going to get home? That mm. tune playing. <laughs> That's the one, you know? Okay, Make Love Not War. War is ugly, love is lovely. From Mickey back, good luck. In Galway, May Bank Holiday Weekend, April 30th to May the 2nd. With David Holmes, Goldie, the Freestylers, Ray and Christian, the Sugar Hill Gang, Talvin Singh, the James Taylor Quartet, Shut Up and Down, Space Odyssey, and more. The Bud Thud, April 30th to May the 2nd. Tickets on sale now. Add beauty, grace, and style to your bedroom. Buy a beautiful fitted slide robe before the 31st of May 1999, and you'll also get a £50 boots voucher to spoil yourself with. Free phone 1 8. Sunny spells and a few afternoon showers, mostly in the north. Highest temperatures for Sunday between 8 and 11 degrees. We leave news again in one hour. I got it, I got it, I'm patched in. Ireland's most tuned in radio station. Great radio. 2 FM. And gentlemen, it is my solemn duty to announce to you that Elvis has left the building. Mickey Mac is sort of dead. <laughs> sort of. You know, sort of, he's still twitching. But oh, man, we can poke him. Yeah. Let's poke him. Let's poke him with a stick. <laughs> Oh, Michael. Man, we have to say, we have to say, um, oh. it's kind of hard to follow this kind of thing because he's an absolute legend and an absolute gentleman and yeah. I wouldn't be here without him today, so I have to say thank you very much as well to him. He's been absolutely brilliant for the last couple of months. I'd love to, I wish I had something totally embarrassingly crawly to say to you here, but, I mean, you're aware of the influence that you had and, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for the help that... 2FM gave us and then Michael sort of snuck in. I mean, they thought he was doing a country music show for two years. <laughs> they did. <laughs> and when they found out that the, the dance, you see, everyone hates country and dance in the, in, in the you know what I mean? So they, they didn't, couldn't tell the difference. But, uh, uh, Somehow he managed to pull the whole thing off as well. Yeah, classic stuff, some of it. I mean, it's all, oh, what can I say? Reminisci, reminisci. This gentleman here actually to measure him for his coffin, but it, and they're hogging all the coffee now. <laughs> But what can we say? What else? I mean... Well, the, the one big question which has been flooding in on yes, the internet yes, is, yeah, is why is Mickey Mac leaving? I mean, has there been a row? What is the row? I wish I could and feel... And the answer is no. No, 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 no. No. There hasn't been no row. But what's he doing now? You see, is the question. Let's get him in to find out. Yeah. Come here. Come Michael. in. Come here. <laughs> 
Let's just break all the rules and open the door here. Come in on. you go, I'm looking well. How you doing? He's back already. Okay. It's the comeback special. <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh, man. Is this going to end up like um, Status Quo's farewell tour number nine? <laughs> It's like a series of things we can start doing, you see. Well, we, we can leave everybody into the secret that we planned this about last October yeah, when, when John came in with you with to, me, uh, to start working, getting into the vibe of 2FM yeah. because I am very excited about a new RTE project, yeah. Lyric FM, which I am delighted to plug now on 2FM. Yeah. Mm. And it's going to be based in my home city of Limerick. It goes out 24 hours a day and it's based on Classic FM in London. And they've offered me a wonderful program, which uh, Alan Freeman did initially on Classic FM, and now Paul Gambaccini is doing. And it is, would you believe, the top 20 countdown every Saturday from... The Mac is back. The Mac is back. So I'll be working on Lyric FM, and I'll be starting off at number 20, Donna Zetti. We continue. <laughs> Michael, I mean, does this mean I can't rely on you to play my tunes anymore? No, I shan't be playing your tunes anymore, Timothy. Unless well, like you want to start like, doing classical <laughs> stuff, maybe. Yeah, I mean, we were just saying, I was just saying to Will outside, that classical music is so near to dance music, really. You know, think of tunes like Crescendo, are you out there? Yeah. Well, you know? layer upon layer, layer. like yeah. melody being the, the leading thing, and actually, you know, very serious structure. And yeah, okay, right. Yeah, on paper, they're very similar, but, you know, let's be honest. So, to tell you that yeah, Lyric is going that. to be Punter Classical Radio, they've also taken uh, Lorcan Murray, a great friend of mine from Limerick as well. He's going to be yeah. joining the station. He's leaving 2FM to go to Lyric as well. It's going to be all announced on Monday. There's an embargo on this. <laughs> but let's tell the world Absolutely. Lyric comes on. So, John, it's all yours, man. And we wish you all the best. Thank you very much indeed. Go for it.